Hello, Wes Tillett here, Executive Director of Lafayette Urban Ministry. LUM officially turns 50 on October 17th. Throughout the month of October, we're gonna highlight different aspects of LUM. This week, we're gonna talk about the history of LUM. Hope you enjoy this video. Thanks. Lafayette Urban Ministry was uh, started uh, by four wonderful gentlemen, uh, Jim Davidson, Tom Hall, Ron Ellie, and Don Need. They got together and uh, did a lot of early research um, into the very, very beginnings of LUM, which was the Neighborhood Development Project, which was a um, social ministry project of Hope Chapel uh, Presbyterian Church. And, and I think the, the catalyst to make this all happen was Ron Illy. Uh, Ron Illy had a vision of churches working together and, um, you know, he was able to bring people together. Next thing you know, um, more churches became involved in supporting the work of Hope Chapel Presbyterian Church. Uh, it got to the point where uh, it grew too big for Hope Chapel and um, Lafayette Urban Ministry was incorporated and born in 1972 and uh, the rest is history, so they say. Lum was riding a wave of um, mainline denominations who wanted to be more engaged in the community. It was, it was part of the, the, um, the spirit of the age, you know, to be more engaged, to get outside of the stained glass prison and be out into the community. So, so it wasn't really something that was uh, unusual back then. What is unusual is Lafayette Urban Ministry is probably one of the few remaining urban ministries that started back then that is still up and running and thriving and uh, doing good in its local community. Even though we're very different, we're Methodist, Unitarian, Presbyterian, we're Roman Catholic, um, we're peace congregations, we're reformed tradition. Um, the one thing we all have in common is uh, we, we know that Christ calls us to serve, and to love, and that scripture calls us to do justice. We, we came about a mission statement we wanted to do something more than just the usual. The Lafayette Urban Ministry is a group of churches who do, you know, nice projects in the community. We started out with, poverty is the greatest thief. More than depriving a neighbor of food or shelter or warmth, it steals away hope. While other thieves may take away the past, Poverty steals the future and self-respect. So whenever we develop program, you know, we were thinking, how can we do this in ways that enhances low-income people, that, that builds self-respect and, and shows respect to them? We started as a emergency assistance program um, that help people stay in their homes from becoming homeless. We paid utility bills, we um, would cover doctor bills, uh, transportation emergencies. Um, and we did so much of that, um, that Lum really couldn't help but learn a lot about what it was that low-income families were, were dealing with. But I always had a, a notion that an urban ministry should be about service, for sure. Uh, it should be about empowering people, the marginalized, and it should be looking out in public policy for justice for the poor. And, you know, it didn't do all of those things all the time, and especially at first. When, when I first arrived, their big project was to provide transportation for the seniors. Great idea, much needed, but you know, it didn't have the ability to hit those three areas. I, I call them kind of like the, the, the three legs of a stool. I always was taken by that uh, passage in Micah. What does the Lord require? But to do justice. It starts out with doing justice and then loving kindness and goodness and then walking humbly with God. So I think from the very beginning, 
uh, I had in my mind, and I certainly spread it to others, uh, that uh, the ministry had to have three legs. Service, sure. Uh, empowerment, of course. But most importantly, it must do justice. Ministries like LUM, many of them were created in the latter 60s and early 70s. But only a few, and LUM being one of them, survived. Why? I think because we had deeper roots than service. You know, service can come and go. Like you said, programs come and go. But seeking justice is something you do long term. And it, it gives you roots, both in, in your community and with people. Youth programs have, through the past 50 years, been an important part of LUM. Um, starting, of course, with LUM Camp, which was uh, LUM's first program back in the days of the Neighborhood Development Project. Um, but th that's uh, grown to Jubilee Christmas. It's grown to the uh, after-school program. And uh, I, I think that uh, if you're trying to have an impact on uh, systemic poverty, the best thing to do is to work with children. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the social justice pieces. And, uh, you know, you can uh, look at uh, all, all the victories, which over time you, you tend to remember. You don't uh, tend to remember the difficulties in getting to those, those victories. But uh, there's uh, WIC, the Women, Infants, and Children program that's here because of LUM. There's free textbooks for low-income children throughout the state of Indiana that are now in place because of LUM. Um, there are um, efforts to um, help with um, making the tax structure more progressive that are here because of, of LUM. So I, I think that uh, uh, when, when taken as a whole, um, LUM has been a remarkably prolific organization when it comes to creating and implementing programs, um, but it all has stemmed from a place of faith um, and a place of uh, um, this fierce urgency of now.